W1VLF. Hey everybody, my name is Paul, W1VLF, and welcome back to the lab. Um, today, um, I got a video that I want to do. I made some progress in cloud bounce, some uh, basic experiments, and I want to share those with, with you guys. But uh, first thing is, I'm running into a problem and I need your help. I need somebody who knows about uh, light scattering and, and stuff and things like, like that. Um, why clouds are white because of a type of scattering. I guess it's my scattering, me a scattering. But I wanted to show you folks this first and I'm gonna interrupt the video and stick this up as a full frame um, while I talk about it. Um, so if you if you look at this diagram, um, this is kind of what happens with cloud scattering, or my best assumption as to what happens with cloud scattering. So in this example, on the left hand side of the screen, you, you see uh, cloud height, right? 2,000 feet. The LED array is pointed perpendicular to that from the ground. So it's pointed straight up. Um, and uh, I know this is not the case, but we're making the assumption that the cloud height, is, that the cloud is a, you know, exactly at 2,000 feet, uh, doesn't vary, uh, is homogeneous, and so that kind of falls into the, the category of, of Lambertian scattering, right? And so the question here is, what, ham, what happens as you move off axis from the LED array pointing into the clouds. Well, there's formulas for it, and if you look at the first arrow pointing down, you'll see at 45 degrees, you would be able to recover 70% of the power incident upon that surface, right? Now, uh, I don't know how much, how reflective that surface is, um, and that's some of the things that I'd like to talk to some, someone who knows physics or, or, or meteorology. Um, but in this particular instance, uh, as you move further away to say 80 degrees off axis from the incident ray, you, you end up with uh, about 17% of the power that's incident upon that cloud. Um, at 17 degrees, excuse me, at, yeah, at 80 degrees away, my elevation angle looking into the cloud is 20 degrees elevation. And as I move further away in distance, right, so because 80, 80, uh, 17 degrees elevation angle would get me out some distance horizontally from the, from the LED array, right? There's a right triangle there. Um, the base of the triangle uh, is um, horizontal. I should have probably put on this, uh, this shot uh, distance, but... Uh, let's just say at 20 degrees elevation, I am roughly two miles away, and at the next arrow up, at, at uh, eight, 82 degrees away from the incident angle, where it is only 10% of the power, I'm eight degrees. Okay, so, so, that, so the question here becomes, if I have X amount of power uh, impinging, incident upon this surface, and again, we're getting rid of all the variables, right? There's no height variable, there, it's a homogeneous surface. Um, this LED array has a six degree um, circle, uh, a six degree beam width, and I'm hoping, it, you know, and so that, that puts a spot at 2,000 feet, and I think like two or 300 feet in diameter. And as we move away, again, at 70, at 45 degrees, there's 70% of the power, 80 degrees, 17% of the power, 82 degrees. And if I went even further closer to the horizon, it would be uh, even less power. So the question is, here's, here's the question. Assuming all those things are static, I am assuming that the same thing happens on the other side. I'm pretty sure it does. But here's the question. Let's suppose um, at 45 degrees to the right of the LED array pointing towards the clouds, let's say to the left of the LED array, we had a transmitting station and we pointed at the cloud at, 40, at 45 degrees and back down to the receiver at 45 degrees, right? And then at 80 degrees out, 
right, or 80, yeah, 80 degrees off axis, another line, which I guess I could have drawn those in there. My, my question is, will moving the transmitter, the LED array at the bottom, to angles 45 degrees, 80 degrees, and 82 degrees, what is that going to do to the amount of received signal strength? That's, that's where I'm running into a problem. There's, there's all sorts of types of scattering. There's Lambertian scattering, there's Rayleigh scattering, and they're dependent upon particle size. Um, from, from what research I could find out that the particle size in a cloud, just a white cloud, is roughly 15,000 nanometers, and I'm dealing with roughly 1,000 nanometers. So it's much, it's much larger. So if somebody out there could help me with this, because and here's the reason why. Um, I want to make a two-way contact. Um, do I go out to 10 degrees uh, at where, you know, 82, 82 degrees with 10% power and then come back off the other side of the cloud? That puts me out at like eight or 10 miles out here. So, and it all depends on cloud height. I'll show you, you'll see the, uh, the actual received signal strengths at these angles specifically uh, in coming up in the video. Before we get into uh, going over to the computer desktop and, and showing some of the actual audio, the experiments that I've done were with two, two separate arrays. This is the one that I used, this, this right here on my right, probably, yeah, my right. Um, it runs at 13.3 volts and about two and a half amps of the input power. Okay, um, and two and a half amps is a 50% modulated 14.4 um, kilohertz uh, square wave, and all that energy is contained within roughly a 6 dB, a 6 degree beam width. So that puts a spot in the clouds that is. Uh, it, what I say, 200 uh, at 2,000 feet, 200 feet wide, something like that. Somebody can check my math if if they don't think that's correct, and it, it may not be, but I, I think it's it's pretty close. This array on the left hand side here is made from four 15 degree IR illumination modules. These are both running at 940 nanometers. So there's four of these, and each one there's two of these in series excuse me, two in series, the two top and bottom, and the other two top and bottom are in series, and those are driven from uh, a clock oscillator running at 60, uh, 64 kilohertz divided by four equals 16 kilohertz. That way there, I have two equally spaced, or, or two spaced carriers for the next phase of this experiment. Um, and so what happens there is um, under testing, on my indoor range, uh, which is about 15 feet, um, this array will give me uh, about a minus, now let's just do it in, in regular numbers, let's call this a zero dB level, and this array, um, even at 15 degrees, beam width much wider, right, oh, two and a half times as wide, uh, will give about, um, I think it's six or, it's about seven dB better. Now the input power to this is two and a half amps under that 50% times two, let's call it two, two amps plus a little more, so 13, 26. This is probably 30 watts of input. This is about 88 watts of input um, when run from the power supply. Um, so this one draws more current, but it's in a much wider beam width. Now one of the things I have to say about these devices is I have not been able to measure these LED devices to say, yes, that's exactly um, 3 dB down at the 15 degree beam widths. I don't know that. But the idea here was going on face value, 15 degrees makes a much larger spot in the sky, should be easier to point at, should light up a more a larger area so that when one, you know, give you a little bit of, of spatial diversity there. So the next step that I'm going to try is having both of these devices in my backyard pointing straight up so that we're able to have, uh, you know, within a, within a foot or so and measured with a level pointing straight up and then I'll go out and do my distance tests again. I have a spot at one mile, two miles, and four and a half miles. Um, and, and I tried this one the other night. At four and a half miles, I had, 
probably 25 dB of, of margin uh, left over. Um, and and that, that's really quite amazing, actually, I thought. Um, and the signal varied, plus or minus, uh, or plus, uh, uh, plus or minus 5 dB, but it averaged to be about 25 dB of signal margin. There was no fast QSB. Any QSB took, I don't know, 20 or 30 seconds to slowly fade in and, and fade out, um, but no very, very quick um, uh, QSB, which I, which I would guess is um, due to the fact that it's a rec reflection coming off of a sm s relatively smooth, sort of smooth surface, the bottom of the cloud, and it's hitting such a large area that the cloud suddenly didn't disappear and suddenly come back again like it would if you were just putting a one foot circle of light up there. So let me show you some of the uh, of, of the uh, the actual video that I did. And again, if anybody has made has made it this far and can actually talk to me on the phone, maybe because I have some specific questions about scattering and where the placement of stations would be. For the best for the best outcomes and oh here's why um good friend fred k1 fms whom which uh i made the uh, we made the 25 mile uh point to point contact um he's got a receiver transmitter i have a receiver transmitter we're 30 miles apart and i'd like to know uh if there's an optimum angle um that we could point at uh, to try some actual two-way cloud bounce experiments anyhow Enough of my jibber jabber, and let me get on with uh, the stuff over on the computer, okay? So here is the first shot, which was one mile from my vertical beacon, and just quickly notice the uh, the QSB when the when the carrier comes up. Uh, how little QS there be there is on on this path, which is pointing into the sky and coming back down. I was at 20 degrees, which agrees with the math for the cloud height and distance. So this piece is video from two miles away, um, which calculated to be an elevation angle of about eight degrees. Um, I don't know if I mentioned it, but uh, so the distance to my ref to my home from this location was two miles. The cloud height was two thousand feet. If you do the math, you come up with about an eight eight degree reflection angle. So let's take a listen to this. All right, so this is the final clip. It is from um, Harwinton to the Burlington Library. It's four and a half miles, just a hair over four and a half miles. The cloud height that evening was 6,000 feet because I didn't do this on the same night as the other two. 
that shot wouldn't have been possible with only a, a 2,000 foot cloud height. But here we are four and a half miles away. Let's take a listen.